Greetings. <clears throat> greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus have been strengthened your court to his will and his purpose. Uh, most importantly, brothers and sisters, I pray that you know that our Lord is faithful. Uh, brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that the Lord Jesus has to pour to us today, pour to us today okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Uh, if dear heavenly wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us our sins we come for your throne. Father, right now, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would take us deep into your heart. Protect us by your spirit. The same way you protected your servants, Lord, with fire from heaven. Protect us today, Lord. Fill every perimeter around us with your glory, Lord. Lord, I just pray right now you will speak freely, have your way. Speak to us, Lord, that we may hear the life that is in you. Lord, transform us by the power of your spirit, that you may nurture us into eternal life. Lord Jesus, we love you. We need you. Speak freely to us, that we may do your will, that we may receive the word that comes from your heart. Speak for us from heaven, that we may do your will, that we may live for your glory. In Jesus' person name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? As I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord been speaking to me concerning his heart, okay? As I was spending time with the Lord, Jesus, he been speaking to me concerning his heart, okay? And he said, son, my word is forever faithful, so trust in me and not this life. Oh. He said that my word is faithful forever and trust in me and not this life. Why? Because I am that life, says the Lord Jesus. And he said, whatever man seek me, will never thirst, will never hunger, because I am that life that fills his soul. Oh. Lord Jesus said, I am that life that fills every man's soul as he sit at my feet and find, uh, and find hope in who I am. Okay? And brothers and sisters, in this life, we can do many things. We can run to and from, but what we need more than anything is the revelation of who God is. Oh. The most important thing we need in our life is not the next thing we can do, but the one who can transform us by his power. Oh. Okay. The most important thing that we can do is not the most the important thing we can do is not just give ourselves over to the things that are around us. It's to give ourselves over to the one who wanna place his spirit within us. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus said in this hour, in this seven year period, leading up to my second coming, that I sit on the throne in heaven with fire in my eyes, consuming everything in the earth, looking at every man in the earth to see who will come and follow me. Oh. And he has said, I have freely given my life over for you and want to put my life in you that you may live and not die. Okay? And the most important thing that we can trust in is not, is not in ourselves, but it's in the faithfulness of God. Okay? The most important thing we can trust, the more, most important thing we can trust in is the life of Jesus. Oh. The most important person we should give our life over to is the life of Jesus. Why? Because the life of Jesus is the perfection of our man. Oh. The life of Jesus is what leads to the perfection in man's heart because he is perfect and he finished it on the cross. Oh. So, brother and sister, the title of this message is Turn and seek God. Oh. Okay. The title of this message is Turn and Seek God. And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. And let me spend a time with the Lord. The Lord Jesus said, Turn and seek me with all your heart. Turn to me with a broken heart. Turn to me with your broken heart, with a broken spirit, and watch my grace heal you. Oh. And he said, Turn to me and seek my face. He said, Turn to me and seek my face. Okay? Brothers and sisters, as we turn to Christ, we can live for Christ. Oh. As we turn for Christ, we can live for Christ, brothers and sisters. And this is the hour to turn and seek his face. Oh. Okay. Brothers and sisters, this is the hour for us to turn and seek God's face. Jesus said, turn and seek me. Okay? The title of this message is, turn and seek me, says the Lord Jesus. Okay? As I'm going to spend the time with the Lord, there's so many things that can catch our attention. There's so many things that can distract us. There's so many things that can cause us to turn. But the best way we can turn is not for the uh, things of this life, but the best way to turn is to God's presence. The best way to turn is the life that comes from God. And that life is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And then the Lord took me to John chapter 8, verse 12. Right? He took me to John chapter 8, verse 12. And watch what it says. Okay? John chapter 8, verse 12. Watch what he says. Okay? 
Jesus is that hope for life for all men to come into their relationship with him. Watch this. It said, again, again, Jesus spoke to him saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the uh, we'll have the light of life. Oh, uh, repeat that now. Jesus said, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Okay. That means in order for us to not walk in darkness, we must walk in Christ. Oh, uh, okay. in order for us to not walk in darkness, we must walk in Christ. In order for us to have the light that God desired for us to have, we must walk in his righteousness. Oh, uh, okay. The light of Jesus is the lamp to our feet that we may not be deceived by the darkness of this life. Right? Because we're in the darkest hour this world have ever seen where there's much corruption going on around us and we need the light of God so we can see. Whenever there's a dark world, you need light, light so you can see. Whenever there's a dark street, you need light poles so you can see. Whenever there's a darkness in your living room or your house, you need a light bulb so you can see what's going on around you. Oh. In this hour, this world is a dark place, and we need a light so we can see what is going on around us. And that light is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as we turn to Christ, we can walk in the light so we can see his grace. We can see his mercy. We can see his kindness. We can see his righteousness. We can see his love and boil over with the righteousness that is in him because we seek him from a genuine place in our heart. Oh. Okay. Jesus said, I am Jesus. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He said that I am the light of the world. And he said, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. That means when we don't follow Christ, we walk in darkness. When we're not baptized in his spirit, filled with his glory, then we walk in the dark, then we walk in the darkness of this world, even if we think we're not. Oh. Why? Because the light of Jesus is the only way to see. Oh. The light of Jesus is the only way to see. So whenever we're not walking in Christ, we walk in pure darkness. That means if we're not in Jesus, we can be walking on a path that look like it's light, look like it's good, but it's really false because the only light is in Christ. Oh. And right now, as we are in this world, as we are in this hour, there are doing many things, passing many legislation that look like it is light, but it's really dark. Oh. But in order for us to see the truth, we must live by the one who is true. Okay? In order for us to see the truth, we must live by the one who is true. And the only way to live by the one who is true is to turn and seek his face. Oh. Okay? The, only way for us, the only way for us to live for the one who is true is to turn and seek his face. Okay? So often we'll build monument for ourselves and seek something or someone. But the greatest person for us to seek is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And in this hour, brothers and sisters, we must have the light of Christ so we don't walk in darkness. Why? Because those that walk in darkness, they stop and they perish because they don't have the light of God in them. Okay? Why? Because if the light of Christ is in us, he increased our faith that we may move by his righteousness. Oh. As we are living for Jesus, he put his light in us that he may increase our faith that we may live beyond our brokenness. That we may live beyond our pain. That we may live beyond our suffering from our childhood. Why? Because he, his power, his presence consumed us that every trial that we went through become a message for his glory. And in this hour, God has given us a message to come to repentance. Why? That we may live and come to his kingdom because this world got an expiration date. Uh -huh. okay? Everything in this life has an expiration date. The job has an expiration date. The car has an expiration date. The house has an expiration date. Even some relationship has an expiration date. But the relationship we have with God never expires because he lives forever. Uh -huh. So what do we say? Let us turn and seek him with all our heart. Because as we turn to seek him with all our heart, his grace will move us into his presence. And the greatest thing in this hour is not the things of this world, but the greatest thing in this hour is God's presence. Oh. The most valuable thing in this hour is not the hope we put into a man, but the hope that we put in God. Why? Because the grace of God's presence is everything we need for life. The grace of God's presence is everything we need for life because his life never fails. Okay? So often we build our life in the hope of things in this life that fails, but rather the grace of God encourages us into righteousness that never fails because there's no shadow of change in God. If us who are earthly will put our confidence in man that changed from one day to the next, how much more should we put our hope in God that never changed but remain the same every day? For Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So what do we say? Let us turn to seek his face that we may live in forever with him. Uh, why? Because he said, I am the light of the world. Okay? So that means everything in this hour 
it's dark if it's not Jesus. Oh, that means everything, the, the job is dark if Jesus ain't in it. The, the, the place that we go is dark if Jesus ain't in it. Why? Because Jesus is the light for everything. Oh, Jesus is the light for everything. That means if there's anything else we do in this life outside of Christ, we don't have the light in us. Why? Because Jesus illuminates everything, right? Jesus is like the headlights on our vehicle. Think about it. Try to ride at night, try to ride at night with no headlights. You're gonna crash because you can't see. But the minute we give our life to Jesus, we ride with our headlights on and we can see what is in front of us. Oh. So what do we see? Let the, let the righteousness of God consume our heart that his glory may fill us with intimacy to pursue him. Why? So that we may turn and seek his face and be consumed by his love. That we may turn and seek his face and be consumed by his love because his love and everything we need for life. Because the greatest life is not the life that we live now, but the greatest life that we, that we can encounter is the life that came by his sacrifice. Uh, why? Because the life of God is everything. The life of God is everything. So therefore, let us be transformed by the power and the majesty of his grace, that his grace may take us deeper for his glory. Okay? Why? Because Jesus is everything. Okay? Jesus is everything. Okay? Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Luke chapter 24, verse 32 through 35. Okay? Let's go back to it. Let's go to Luke real quick. Luke chapter 24, verses 32 to 35. Now let's read it now. Let's watch it. It said, I'm going to start at verse 30. When he was at a table with them, he took bread and, and blessed it and broke it and he gave, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open. And their eyes were open. And they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened us the scripture? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven. They found the eleven who uh, those who were with him uh, gathered together, saying, "The Lord has risen indeed." Now watch this. Jesus came and broke bread with them, but they could not recognize him at first. Oh. Okay. Now, watch this. Verse twenty. Let me read again. It said, "So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, "Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent." So he went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took and he took he took the bread and um and blessed and broke bread, it, bro broke it and gave it to them, and their eye was open, and they recognized him. Paul, they could not recognize Jesus in the room until he broke bread with them. Uh, they could not recognize Jesus in the room until they broke bread with him. Today, are we breaking bread with God in His presence that we may get a revelation of who He is? Uh, because only when we break bread with God can we see who He is. Only when we break bread with God can we be transformed by power. Only when we break your bread with God can we see the righteousness of His will. So here's the thing, my brothers and sisters. Here's the thing, my brothers and sisters. Watch it now. These men had Jesus in front of them. These men had Jesus in front of them. They were sitting at the table with Jesus. But they could not recognize who he was until he broke bread with them. And once he broke bread with them, they recognized him. See, when we break bread with God, we're able to see him for clearly who he is. Why? Because in this hour, they're giving false revelation, resu uh, resurrecting idols, false God, which is no God at all. They can't hear, they can't talk, they can't read. But the God of heaven, the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob, that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, my brothers and sisters. So as we break bread with God, we get intimate with God. Oh. As we break bread with God, we get intimate with God. Why? Because Christ Jesus is the bread of life. So let us turn and seek him. Okay? As we break bread with God, we get intimate with God. So how many of us is breaking with breaking bread with God is going deeper to his presence? How many of us is breaking bread with God and seeking him with all our heart? How many of us is breaking bread with God that we may come from that place of death and move in a place of life because that life loves us even more than ourselves? The greatest love in this life you can have is not the love that man desires, but the greatest love you can have in this life is the love that God has given you through his sacrifice. Okay? Okay? Why? Because Jesus is the bread of life. Okay? Jesus is the bread of life. Okay? So let's move forward, my brothers and sisters. Okay? When, when they broke bread with Jesus, their eyes was open and they were able to see the Lord. Okay? When they broke bread with Jesus, their eye was open and they was able to see the Lord. Now, why is that important, my brothers and sisters? Why is that important? Why? Because as we break bread with God, it is the evidence that we're seeking God's face. When we break bread with God, it is the evidence that we're seeking God's face. Okay? Watch that now. When we break bread with Jesus, it is the evidence 
that we are seeking his face. So what is the glory to have hope in him? Oh, okay. What is the glory to have hope in him? Why? Because Christ Jesus is all we need for life. Because Christ Jesus is the one for life. So let's keep going. Let's keep. So let us rise. Let us recognize Jesus by seeking his face. For no man can recognize Jesus if he have not encountered him through his presence. Okay, no man recognize Jesus unless he have encountered him in his presence. So when man break bread with God, he entered God's presence. And what is breaking bread with God? It's when we live by his sacrifice. What is breaking bread with God? It's when we live by his sacrifice. And that sacrifice is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. So let's keep moving forward. Psalm chapter, Psalm 135, verse 15, okay? Psalm 135. Verse 15. Okay. Psalm 135. Verse 15. Okay. Let's get to it. Keep going, bro. Psalm 135. Verse 15, okay? Watch what it says now. Verse 15, it says, The idols of the nation are silver and gold in the, work of, uh, in the work of human hands. They have mouth but do not speak. They have eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear. Nor is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them become like them, so do all who trust in them. Yeah. The Lord said that in this hour, in this seven year period leading up to his second coming, the idols of this life is the riches of this world. The idols of this life is the riches of this world. But check this out, brothers and sisters. The greatest wealth you can ever have in your life is the relationship with Jesus. The greatest wealth you can have is not how much money you got in your bank account, but the one who you have in your heart. The greatest wealth in this life is not how much we got in our bank account, but the greatest riches you can ever have is the one who is in your heart. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So what do we say? Let us turn to seek him and not this life. Let us turn to seek him and not the riches and wealth of this world. God said, anoint your eyes so you can see. Come to me, give your life to me, and experience true riches, right? Because the greatest rich you can, the greatest riches you can ever have is the joy of heaven. Oh. The greatest riches you can ever have is the joy of heaven. Why? Because the joy, the joy of God is more precious than gold. The joy of God is more precious than gold. Why? Because the joy of God brings eternal life. The joy of God brings eternal life forevermore. Verse 15 said the idols of the nation, the idols of the nation are silver and gold, the work of the human hands. So we see right now in this hour, the one world government, even people from the White House, is exalting human fraternity, right? Exalting mankind and exalting science. But guess what? God said, I knew that they would do this in an hour. I knew they would turn money into an idol. I knew that they would turn themselves into an idol. I knew that they would exalt the works of their own hand, which they cannot hear, which they cannot do, or none of these things. But the Lord said, put your hope in me. He said, turn and seek my face. Why? Because I'm about to crush everything around you and bring everything low so they can see and know that I am God. Okay. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? Hope is in Jesus, not this life. So what do we say? Let us turn, let us turn from our way and turn to God's way. Oh. Let us turn from our way and turn to God's way. Why? Because God's way is the truth and the life. And that life is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? Let us turn and seek him. If us who are earthly would, if somebody told us they had a, a good connection for us, we would run with endurance and turn and try to follow it. How much more should we turn to the grace of God who have followed, who have led us to eternal life? Oh. If us who are earthly would hear a good word and turn and follow man, how much more should we receive the word of heaven and turn to follow God? And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Why? Because he is the way, the truth, the life. Okay. So let's keep moving forward. John chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Okay. John chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Let's go to it. John chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Let's keep our eyes. Oh. Let us keep our eyes on the Lord. Oh. The most beautiful thing about seeking God is to keep our eyes on Him. Oh. The most beautiful thing about seeking God is to keep our eyes on Him. Because when we, begin, when we begin to look at the things around us, we become consumed. 
But when we look at the one who is forever, we don't be consumed by the things of this life, but we be consumed by the one who is life. Jesus. Let us keep our eyes on him. So we, we, so if because if we look at this life, we'll be consumed by everything around us. But when we keep our eyes on him, we'll be consumed by everything that is in his glory. Oh. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? Let us be consumed by his glory, his righteousness. Let us be consumed by his glory, his righteousness, because his righteousness is what we need for eternal life. For if us who are earthly would seek the things in his life and hope, how much more should we seek the hope that comes from God that brings us life? Why? Because Christ Jesus is indeed our Lord and our Savior. So what do we say? Let us press deep into his presence. Let his peace consume our heart from heaven that we may walk according to his will and his purpose. Why? Because God is faithful even to the death on the cross. God is faithful even to the death on the cross. Why? Because God is our Lord. He is our Savior. And in Him is all the life we need to survive. In Him is all in, in Him is all the life we need to survive. So let us press on with endurance. Let us press on with maturity. Let us press on into righteousness by seeking His faith. Let us, let us mature in our faith by seeking Him. Let us mature in our faith by seeking Him. Because there are no, there's no maturity in our heart outside of seeking him. Because maturity come by seeking him. Oh. James said, if a man tell you, uh, I'll show you my faith without works. He, James said, listen, I'll come and show you my faith by my works. And the greatest work we can ever do is seek his faith. The greatest work we can ever do is seek his faith. I'm telling you, the greatest work is not the things that we can do around us. But the greatest work is how we humble ourselves at his feet. The greatest work is not how fast we can run and do something, but the greatest work is how low we can lay at his feet. Because Jesus said, if we humble ourselves, we will be exalted. But, but if, we, if we exalt ourselves, we will be humble. Church, let us humble ourselves by seeking his face. Let us humble ourselves by seeking his glory. Let us humble ourselves because we know he is the only hope for life that can transform us by his power. Because the greatest power is not the will of man, but the greatest power is the will of God. The greatest power is not the will of man, but the greatest power is the will of God. And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So how much more should we seek God and love him at all costs because he gave all for us? How much would we seek his face because he, because he gave us life at all costs? So if he gave his life that cost him everything, how much more should we lay down, lay down our life and give all to him because he loved us even? to the death on the cross. So what does we say, brothers and sisters? Let us turn to seek his face. Let us turn to seek his face. Why? Because as we seek his face, he heal our heart. As we seek his face, he heal our heart. Because the greatest healing is not the thing we do in this life, but the greatest healing is surrender ourselves to the one who is life. So the greater we surrender, the greater we are healed. The greater we surrender, the greater we are free. The greater we surrender, the more we won't be deceived, the greater we, the greater we surrender, there's only one result. But life, but 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 life from coming from that dead place. So what do we say? As we walk in Christ, God remove us from that dead place and bring us into the place of life. Bring us into the bring us into the place of life. So brothers and sisters, as we seek Jesus, as we turn to Him, there's only one result: life from the dead. There's only one result coming from death to life. Why? Because as we seek his face, it brings life to our soul. As we seek his face, it brings life to our soul. So John chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Watch, it said, Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not, you, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can, how can you believe if I tell you heaven, heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven. So the Son of Man, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So Jesus said, if I tell you earthly things and you can't see it, why can, how can you hear if I tell you heavenly things? Oh. When Jesus sacrificed his life, he brought heaven to earth. Oh. When Jesus sacrificed his life, he brought heaven to earth. For what reason? That we may receive eternal life. So as we seek God, it brings heaven in our heart. Oh. And we seek God, heaven flow through us. 
as we seek God, he chained us to his presence, that his presence will produce fruit that wells up into eternal life. So the greatest fruit that we can ever have is our relationship with Jesus. The greatest fruit we can ever produce is our relationship with Jesus. The greatest fruit we can ever do, brothers and sisters, is to give our life for his testimony. Because the greatest testimony that we're ever given is not by a lawyer in this courtroom, but the greatest testimony that we're ever given was given by the lawyer of heaven. And that lawyer is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So what do we say, brothers and sisters? Jesus said, I tell you heavenly things, not earthly things. He said, I tell you heavenly things, not earthly things. So in order for you to receive heavenly things, in order for you, in order for you to understand heavenly things, in order for you to walk in heavenly things, you must hear my heart and seek my faith. Because if you can't understand it from an earthly place, surely you won't understand it from a heavenly place. So how do we understand the heavenly wisdom of God? It's through one person. That's Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And he said, turn and seek my faith. So brothers and sisters, what do we say? Let us turn to seek Jesus. Let his life fill our hearts. Let us surrender our life coming to a place of repentance that his love may consume us. Because brothers and sisters, if it's gonna be anything we consume by, let it be his love. If there's gonna be anything we pursue, let it be his heart. If there's gonna be any way that we increase, let it be in faith. If there's any humility that we will seek, let us humble ourselves at his feet. And if there's any pride in our heart, let it be humbled by his grace. And if there's anything that we will lay our life down for, let it be for his testimony that in all things will be received up when he comes. Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray that the word was a blessing to you. And I pray that it leads you to everlasting life. So what do we church say? If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Uh, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not be but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God.
for your encouragement. You encourage me, you don't understand, bro. You encourage me a lot, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Amen, bro. Glory to Appreciate it, bro. Likewise, glory to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? It's time for us to repent. America, what do we say, church? It's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. America, 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 repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. America, you're about to be judged back to back, back to back, like you have never seen before. America, you better repent. Judgment is on the land. Judgment is on this world. And Jesus is not pulling it back to the second coming. America, you're about to be judged back to back until you humble yourself and acknowledge Jesus is God and repent and turn from your sins. The same way God sent Jonah to Nineveh is the same way he raised up service to tell you to repent, America. Repent, America, because you're about to be judged like you have never seen before. Famine, judgment, America, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what do we say? Repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Judgment is on this world, and Jesus is not pulling it back to his second coming. So what did that say about God's grace? What did that say about God's grace? That God's grace is an instrument that leads to obedience. God's grace is an instrument that leads to obedience. God did not give us his grace for us to live in the type of way we want. But God gave us his grace for us to live the way he wants. And that way is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So what do we say, brothers and sisters? What should our mindset be? We should rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Because true success is not having abundance of things in this life, but true success is being retrieved by the one who will receive you into life when he comes. Okay? Why? Because we can be billionaires, we can have all the money in the world, but when Jesus come, and we don't go here, no matter how successful we was in this life, we was a failure because we did not fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey Jesus from the heart and truth in the spirit. But, Jesus come, we can just be a normal worker nine to five, or running our business that God blessed us with. But we serve him more than anything in this life. We had a genuine relationship with him. We loved our God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and we loved our neighbor as ourselves. And when he comes, when he comes, we go with him, then we with a smashing success. Because we fulfilled our true duty. We live and obey Jesus from the heart. We live and obey Jesus from the heart. And truth and the spirit. So what do we say? Let the kingdom of God lead our life. Let the kingdom of God lead our life. And that kingdom is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly and Wise Father, we repent of our sin. Please forgive us our sin and come to your throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your life. We thank you for your hope. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your fulfillment. We pray that we please your name. Father, we thank you for your grace and shown today, your mercy. Today, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we can heal your heart, Lord. We pray that your word that was preached today fall on good ground. We pray that your word today will fall on good ground. Lord. That it will not go in one ear and not the other. That it will not fall on rocky ground. That it will not bear fruit. But we pray that it will fall on good soil. That it will bear fruit a hundred times fold. Oh. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you. And we worship you forever. Lord, fill us up with more of your righteousness. That we may live for your glory. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray that the word was a blessing to you. And may the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus be with you. Even, even to the end of this age. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Goodbye.